Nick Brandon, Alexander teacher. I practice in central West London, Notting Hill. I teach people to be poised and balanced and present in whatever activities they do so they can avoid uh, uh, aches and pains and discomfort and they can use their body as nature intended. So today I'm, uh, I'm going to just share with you these two chairs. I've, these two chairs I've got, they're designed by two renowned designers. They're called the Tipton chair and they're, they're, a lot of research and development and design went into these chairs and I really like them. They take a bit of getting used to. We spend most of our life sitting in chairs. We're professional chair sitters. And uh, these chairs, are, they're called Tipton because they've got it. They sort of tip and they rock and they, they take a bit of getting used to, but they're amazing chairs. And um, if we're sitting, we we place a lot of uh, we place a lot of thought, and we we can often spend a lot of money on getting the perfectly designed ergonomic chair that slightly have levers to sort of uh, position the chair and position the backrest support, and we place a whole lot of emphasis on the design of the chair. And the the missing link, I think, is we forget about the the, the design of our bodies and how we can best adapt ourselves to contemporary living and contemporary living means we're stuck in often stuck at computer technology and uh, as I said we spend an enormous amount of time sitting in chairs so it's never what we do it's the way we do it and often the new thing has been standing at desk uh, desks that, that you can stand on and it's never what you do it's the way you do it so we can spend like an hour standing at a desk but I may not be standing very well standing in the way that the body feels like it's light, it's grounded, it's supported, and there's a sense of flow rather than sort of being fixed and tight. The body loves smooth, perpetual movement. People often ask me, Nick, what's the best posture? And I say, the best posture is the next best posture. Never get stuck in any one position. The body loves a variety of movements. So during your day, introduce a variety of movement. Never get up and move. If you're, if you're um, taking a telephone call, Make sure that you maybe get up and move as you're taking that call. Get up and walk. Don't spend more than 40 minutes. I'd say at least 20, you know, 20 minutes, get up and walk. So we're changing our position. We're changing our posture. In my work, I never use the word, in, in my work, I never use the word position because it applies fixed, static. Never use the word posture because when we think of posture, immediately we think it's something that we need to do. So I prefer the word poise. When we're poised, it's more like a state of being. It's like a state of flow where the body isn't fixed and stuck or positioned in any one position. So this Tipton chair, it's got a chamfered edge here. It's got a chamfered head edge here and it's got, a, it's got a slight curve here which allows the chair to rock. The chamfered edge here is to maybe stop the uh, edge of the chair uh, pressing into the leg and maybe limiting the circulation. Generally, we get a little bit stuck and uh, the, sh the hip flexors here get shortened. The reason it's got a slight tip and it slightly tips forward is because we're less, we're more susceptible to slumping back. And so many chairs that we often find ourselves sitting in are slightly inclined and slightly tilted, tilted back. So that basically makes us more susceptible to slumping back. And this chair's got a nice back as well. It's got a nice back, so we can still have a little bit of support. I can still sit in this chair and be right back in the chair and really use the back support to allow my spine to lengthen up. The foundation of the spine is the sit bones. We're, as a culture, obsessed by muscles. We think if we tighten our core muscles, if we've got sculpted, tight, strong muscles, that that's gonna give us support. And what we forget is this intelligent design of the body it's got an inbuilt anti-gravitational system. It's got an inbuilt, inbuilt muscles uh, that take us, that help to elongate the spine, to, keep, uh, to have our body, to have our torsos and our body and our spines lengthen up. So there's an inbuilt anti-gravitational system and there's, there's a muscular system that takes our spines up against gravity, the gravitational force. So the opposite of gravity is levity. So a uh, bit of body mapping. One of the most important things we, uh, we've got to think of when we're sitting is the base of the spine, which are the sit bones. Sit bones are part of the pelvis, and you'll see them here. 
that you can see this is the tailbone and just about a few inches below the tailbone is the sit bones. So when I'm sitting on the tailbone, I'm not tailbone sitting, I'm not collapsing on the tailbone and sitting on the tailbone and so often that, that's what happens and it pr produces a lot of weight on that lower part of the back. So we're susceptible to nerve impingement, disc compression, tight muscles and what happens is when we collapse as well, it affects the way we function, we don't breathe as well, we're not as present, we're not as, uh, the, the spine isn't elongating, it hasn't got that fluid flow through the body. So the sit bones, if you're not sure where they are, just rock on them, you'll feel the sit bones. And rocking on them, it's, it, it creates motion. The spine loves perpetual smooth mo uh, movement. So rocking on the sit bones, and that will keep the spine flowing. This little tip here will, as I say, inc just create more of a slight forward anterior tilt of the pelvis. And that will help to keep the spine elevated and keep the spine extending and lengthening. And what in, what's included in the spine is the head balance. The head balance determines overall uh, coordination of the body. It determines the coordination of the spine. So the, if the head is slightly pulled into a computer screen or it's craning forward, again, that puts a downward pressure on the body. It shortens the muscles, compresses the discs and shortens the spine. So. You know, really rocking on the sit bones, and you can see that when we're thinking about poise, it's more like a dynamic position. The spine's organic, it's dynamic. We want it rotating, we want it spiraling, we want it flexing, extending. There's lots of movement. We never want to get stuck. So, yeah, I think my top tips today, and it's called the tip tom chair. So, yeah, tip tom. We want to um, have this have the spine slightly inclined forward, so we're less susceptible to being collapsed, feet on the floor. So we're relying on this deep bone strength. My feet are connected to the floor, so my feet are grounded. Think of your sit bones as a second pair of feet. So the more we can release into our, the feet on the floor, the more we can release into the sit bones, the more we awaken this anti-gravitational postural mechanism, the muscles that take us up. And it's a design that's been the that's uh, been developed over millions of years, the body knows how to take itself up and against gravity. And we have to have a bit of conscious intention. We have to have a bit of awareness. One of the most powerful energies in the world is our conscious intention, what Alexander called our conscious constructive thinking. So our conscious constructive thinking is releasing down and the more we release down, there's like an oppositional force that takes us up against that gravitational force that we can often feel pulls us down. So feet grounded, sit bones connected, breathing and expanding in the back, making sure that if you have a screen in front of you, if you're sitting, that it's roughly the eye line of, uh, roughly in front of your eye line so you're not pulling down. And think of that where the head meets the tip of the spine it's right in between the ears. We want the head floating up. So that sense of being really grounded and rooted. And when we're really grounded and rooted, that allows the spine to lengthen. So we have this sort of dynamic poise where it's not fixed. We're not in a position. We're not stuck. We're free to move. And I'll maybe just demonstrate the moving. So when I go to move, I can just give myself a moment. Just give myself a moment. And then in that moment, I can choose to be conscious in the way I move. And the way I move, I'm going to be lengthening up through the torso, neck and head. I'm going to be breathing and smiling. And this little tip tips me forward. So I'm like releasing forwards and releasing upwards in space. And I come into full upright. And as I release upwards, I'm continuing to release downwards into my feet. And that deep bone strength that architecture and strength of those amazing bones does most of the support because I'm working in partnership with gravity, that deep bone strength, working with the intrinsic core muscles. The core muscles are not the ones we overly focus on. We feel we've got to tighten the core, which often what I, when I do that, I feel I can't breathe properly. What I'm doing is really having that solid foundation, the keystone, the foundation for my architecture, 
my skeletal structure is being really grounded and supported, then the muscles have to do less work. And I'm working in partnership with gravity. The head continues to float up on top of the tip of the spine. My spine continues to expand, particularly the back, where we get very tight, tense, short and contracted muscles from sitting. And that leads to, that, that means that there's very little movement in the back. We want to check that we're not locking the legs, we're free and mobile in the ankles, in the hip sockets. So when I go to release down, I'm again extending up through the spine, hinging in the hinge joint, and all the ankles are free. If you find yourself a little bit locked in the hip flexors, in the hip joints, you can just move the hips like that. These muscles tend to shorten from sitting for long hours. So again, keep yourself moving keep the sit bones connected and yeah, don't focus so much on the ergonomics of the chair. Think of your inner ergonomics, your body intelligence. How are you best adapting to the given circumstances, the activity that you find yourself engaged in? Start to tune up your own instrument. Start to tune up and think about your own inner ergonomics, your own body intelligence. And as soon as we do that, we come into the body and we start thinking about creating a thinking intelligent body so it serves us well so when we go to use our body it's playing in tune it's in flow and we don't find ourselves so stuck and fixed and collapsed and in what we find ourselves fixed in seated positions so get up and move and the body loves a variety of movements smooth perpetual dynamic movement so thanks for watching, I hope it's been useful. And just think about how best you could adapt yourself to that inevitable thing we have to do, which is to sit at computers. Use yourself intelligently. Don't let technology use you. Make sure that you're using yourself well in relationship to the technology that you find yourself using. And that could be a smartphone pulling down television screen, computer screen. It could even be an activity of sitting at a table eating. So I hope that's been useful. Nick from Poised and Balance, practice in Notting Hill, Central London. Please press subscribe and I'll be sending more videos out.